Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about peritoneal dialysis. So if you do like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and then don't forget to subscribe. And then check out ninjanerd.org. That's where all of our notes and illustrations for every video that we put up here on YouTube are available for you guys to utilize. But let's get started here with another renal video talking about peritoneal dialysis. So we just wrapped up a lecture on hemodialysis, and now we're going to talk about peritoneal dialysis. So we're in the realm of a patient that's having dysfunction with the kidney, right? They have decreased functioning of the kidney and their route now to care for themselves is either peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. And it's really patient to patient. There is history of which one's better than the other, what is the findings, and as of right now as it stands, peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis are very synonymous. It really depends on patient to patient. So when we talk about peritoneal dialysis, we're gonna just quickly talk about what are the indications for it. Why is one versus this versus hemodialysis better or worse, or why would this make a good choice for certain patients? So the first is gonna be, when we're talking about this is, is the patient gonna be able to handle the in-depth surgery of waiting for a fistula or a graft to form? Because remember, when we get a surgery for hemodialysis, to get a graft or a fistula, it takes six months for it to heal. So in this realm, we don't have to wait those six months because we can go and get the catheter placed and use it a lot sooner. So one of the indications for peritoneal dialysis over hemodialysis is the use of getting, uh, the use of getting and then using vascular access. The next indication is gonna be, is this patient stable? So are they having chronic infections? Do they have unstable hypertension where their, their hypertension is going so high and then if they were getting hemodialysis, it would bring their pressure down so low that they would have issues? Or is there some other underlying issue where maybe they can't handle anticoagulants and therefore hemodialysis is not a good choice for them? And then the last thing that we're gonna talk about for indications for a patient to get peritoneal dialysis would be is this patient still able to be independent? Because when we get peritoneal dialysis, there is still a level of independence where they can stay at home and do it at, at their home, at their will, and then they are also able to have their independence to move around and they're not locked into going, like we talked about in hemodialysis, to a facility and getting that done three to four times a week. So these are just some of the indications that we take into consideration when we have a patient and if we're thinking about hemodialysis versus peritoneal. And what is peritoneal dialysis? It's essentially when we are utilizing the peritoneum, right, the serous membrane within our abdominal cavity that's holding all of our organs as a filtration membrane. So our peritoneum is a semi-permeable membrane that's going to allow us to instill this sterile solution and as we get filtration occurring, it collects all the waste and then we can expel the waste into a drainage bag. So our peritoneum is gonna work as our semi-permeable membrane and before the patient goes and gets their first dialysis treatment, we're gonna look at what is needed and that's the peritoneal catheter. So this patient's gonna get a, a basically it looks like a suprapubic catheter, but it's going to be right here on the outside with its little port attachment and then when this patient goes through surgery and has this, then we can quickly utilize that for dialysis. They don't have to wait those six months in order for it to heal. It's a lot shorter of a downtime and then it can be utilized. So when we're talking about peritoneal dialysis, this is the setup here that will not be utilizing the machine, but utilizing gravity. And what happens with the patient is we will have the dialysate solution in this bag. We will attach it to our catheter, right? We'll unclamp the dialysate solution and put that in. This would be the first time. So we're gonna put dialysate in. Dialysate will sit and dwell. So we call this the dwelling time. So as it flows in by gravity, we'll have this dwelling time. And then once dwell time is over, we will then unclamp the drainage bag and then let that drain out and collect our waste. Then after every subsequent peritoneal treatment from this, what we'll do is we'll actually drain, after the dwell time, drain our waste first and then instill our dialysate solution and let that dwell again. So the first procedure, they get the dialysate in and then it's gonna dwell and then everyone after that is gonna be dialysate or drainage first and then dialysate in. So remember this because when we start talking about the NCLEX and the order, you wanna pay attention to what the question is asking you. Is this the patient's first 
treatment or is it going to be subsequent treatments? This is how we use gravity so there is no fluids or no machines that we need to utilize pump the fluids in. And remember when we are doing this, dialysate solution bag is above or at shoulder height and the drainage bag is below waist. So the waist bag is below the waist. Now let's talk about what the steps are as a nurse when we are doing this procedure. So when we jump into our pre-procedure, this is our patient typically is going to get their first one done in the hospital right after surgery is completed so that we're able to not only assess how the patient can handle this, but make sure that we're teaching them as well. So for the first procedure, the pre-procedure, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do the same thing as hemodialysis, but we're going to check their weight, check their labs, and make sure that their blood sugar and everything else is looking normal for us. And then we're also going to get a dry weight. And the dry weight is essentially meaning the patient doesn't have any solution in them right now. So they're, they're dry. There's no hypertonic solution within them, dialysate within them, so they are considered dry. And then while we're doing all this, we're going to make sure that the patient had consent signed and did everything with that prior to getting surgery and we're ready to roll now. We're going to check that vascular access because they just got an access point completed and we want to make sure that it's looking healthy, it's looking nice and clean, there's no drainage, there's no leakage, and that it's actually able to be utilized. So we're going to assess our catheter. Then from there, we're going to make sure that we know what the two different types are of peritoneal dialysis. So for these patients, they can have CAPD, which is our continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, or our automated peritoneal dialysis. When they're having the continuous ambulatory, it's essentially what the word has in there, right? It's continuous, it's going to be happening multiple times throughout the day, and they're going to be able to walk around doing this. So this is every day for a number of times throughout the day, possibly four to five times. And it's going to be as we described over here, where we're utilizing gravity, there is no machine, the patient can put it up on a pole, or they can go work on the computer, put it up on a hook, and be able to instill and drain their waste without having to leave their home. And they can essentially leave home if they need to, but this is done every day and they're able to walk around, they're able to be independent, they're able to be mobile. Where on our automated, this is the one that we do at nighttime. So this one takes around eight to 10 hours, they have a machine at home, and the patient will be set on, up on it during the night, and they will do this every night. And then it'll just turn over and change their dwell times and their dialysate to throughout the nighttime when they sleep. And some patients prefer this because they essentially hook themselves up, go to sleep, and then they're able to sleep and then move around throughout the day without being hooked up to anything. So once we know which kind of peritoneal dialysis these patients are going to be using, we can go into our intra-procedure intra and our post-procedure. So the intra-procedure is essentially where we're just monitoring this patient. We're making sure that there's no leakage at that access point. We're making sure that their vital signs and everything is looking stable. This is where we can sit and talk with our patient about things that we want to make sure they can do and can't do because we want to make them as independent as we can when we're utilizing this in the bedside. So showing them what proper technique is, how they're going to set things up, put things on. And then we're also going to show them all the components that we're going to be checking for. Is the access site red, leaking? Is there any type of drainage? Is the waste that's coming out having any discoloration or any problems with um, clotting, with fibrin clots or blood clots, anything that we need to utilize and look for? And then is there anything else that they should be doing within this? So they be checking to make sure they're not spiking any fevers? Because the biggest thing with intra-procedure and post-procedure is to making sure that we don't have any developing infections coming along. So we wanna make sure that when we are doing this intra-procedure, we're making sure that we're talking to our patient. We're telling them that we're looking at that drainage and we wanna make sure that it's pale, it's clear, and maybe a little bit of yellow. Right? We want to make sure that whatever we're putting in, we want to make sure that that output is coming out, so the amount of our drainage. And then we also want to make sure they have proper technique of hooking up, they know their drainage and dwell time, and then we also want to make sure that the solution has been warmed. So for this, I also want to call this our dwell time. And then we also want to keep in mind here that we're keeping our waist bag lower than our waist. Our gravity bag is either higher than our shoulders, but if they're on the APD, that they're just able to utilize the machine because that'll take over gravity for us. 
And then when we go into our post procedure, we want to make sure that we just understand for this patient how they are going to take care of their body when they are not getting this dialysis. So it's very similar. It always mirrors our pre-procedures. We're going to make sure the vital signs, the labs all look good, and then their blood sugar looks good as well. And I may not have said this before, but it's really important with blood sugar to make sure that we're checking these patients because they can have hyperglycemia, which can be a complication, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we also want to make sure we're checking their weight again. And then we're just going to explain to this patient what their care is going to look like, making sure that they know how to properly clean around their catheter, making sure that they're aware of any types of signs and symptoms that they should be reporting, like we talked about before, any types of fevers, redness, drainage from that catheter site. Now let's talk about some complications and then our patient education. The first complication that we're going to be worried about is an infection. Particularly when we're talking about infections, we're talking about the patient maybe has some underlying infection like a pneumonia or a UTI, or there could be infections around the catheter site that we're also going to be particularly honing in on. The signs and symptoms of that would be redness at the catheter site, pool and drainage at the catheter site, leaking during dialysis, or any other indication to us that may not be showing that the catheter is working properly should put us in the area of, okay, there might be an infection going on with this patient. Bouncing off of the infections, we are very particularly concerned about catheter site infections because those could lead to us having peritonitis, okay? And we don't want a patient that is utilizing their peritoneum to be able to filter and use as dialysis to have an infection and then cause an issue with them to be able to receive that dialysis. So when we are taking care of these patients, some indications for us that they may have some peritonitis would be the drainage bag changing colors. So when we're looking at the waste or the drainage, we're seeing something that's looking darker in color, something that is looking cloudy, having purulent looking, is there any type of blood that's coming out? Anything that is showing an indication that it is changing and it's not that nice, clear, pale yellow, that we might have an infection within our abdomen. And then our last concern for complications with peritoneal dialysis is hyperglycemia. The dialysate that we use is hypertonic. For a lot of patients, there can cause issues with them to be able to control their blood sugar. So we want to make sure that we are checking those blood sugars because we don't want this patient to have any other issues. So hyperglycemia is just like when we talked about in any other form of hyperglycemia is a patient starting to have any type of symptoms that are showing us. Are they having some sort of sweaty moments? Are they saying that they're feeling a little dizzy? They're feeling a little off? Simple thing to do is to first check the blood sugar. So this is something that we can educate our patients on. If you don't feel quite right after a couple hours of getting dialysis, just make sure you check your blood sugar because that's an easy fix for us and they'll be able to take whatever insulin or anything at home that they do have at bedside. And then our patient education is really, once they understand the setup, the signs and symptoms that they're looking for, for these complications, the biggest things here are just how they are going to attach and disconnect and clean their areas, right? Because if we look at our complications, they're all mostly stemming from an infection to that area. So for patient education, the cleaning of the area is very important. We want to make sure that they are cleaning their catheter correctly, right? They're able to use soap and water. They're able to keep that catheter cap nice and clean and sterile, and then they're keeping their dialysate nice and sterile. So it's aseptic technique with cleaning and washing the hands. It's a sterile technique to just adhere that dialysate. We don't want, when we're like hooking up fluids to somebody, we don't want the port that we're using from the bag touching the floor and then going onto the patient's port. Everything has to be a clean connection. And that's it, Niche Nerds. That is our video on peritoneal dialysis. I hope it made sense. If you did, make sure you hit a thumbs up, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, until next time.